This week on The Crypto Planet, a newly elected mayor, a dangerous new game, and a new Pulp Fiction. They all made the news in the world of crypto. So here we go for a news roundup with 7 Days in Crypto. Destination New York. Politics for starters. What if New York City became the business capital of the world again? That's what Eric Adams is hoping for. He's the new boss of the Big Apple. I'm the mayor. He was elected as mayor on Tuesday after beating a red-buried Republican. The former cop entered politics as a Democrat and wants to make his city the center of Bitcoin. And for his new ambitions, Eric Adams does not intend to leave anyone behind. We put on one jersey, Team New York. Heading now to South Korea. Squid Game crypto scammers have put the squeeze on investors. The developers of the token based on the famous Korean Netflix series in which the winner takes all and everybody else dies are on the run. Did you see me escaping? The price of their cryptocurrency went viral in just a few days before plummeting to almost zero. <laughs> Buyers couldn't resell their tokens, developers could. And they did brutally dumping millions of them on Monday for around $3 million. With no official affiliation with the series and dodgy online platforms, the red flags were flying high. But some investors sadly had no inkling of the risk. What would the robot do? The devastating rug pull still didn't discourage a handful of extremely optimistic users. But where is the trickster of the week hiding? On the increasingly lucrative NFT market, we know that CryptoPunks are worth a lot of money. These punks are business punks. But we didn't know that they were worth quite so much. A CryptoPunk worth 500 million is a lot. And that's how much the owner of number 9998 claimed to have sold one for. But he got busted. Twitter account CryptoPunkSpot spotted that the transaction was a flash loan. That's when the seller and the buyer are actually the same person. And why? to drive up the value of the crypto punk to sell it even more expensively the next time round. It's happening what? again. A little tour of Africa. After Leonardo DiCaprio, Matt Damon now wants to save the planet. Until everybody has access to clean water and sanitation, I will not go to the bathroom. The co-founder of Water.org announced this week that his organization, which aims to help poor communities, is partnering with Crypto.com. The platform has pledged $1 million to Water.org. Jason Bourne says it's a smart company with innovative solutions. He's visibly more optimistic than his mentors. Le Borlot, dans 20, 30 ans, il n'y aura plus. Heading to LA. Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! You've seen it a hundred times, but you haven't seen everything. Pulp Fiction, Tarantino's legendary film in which John Travolta still knows how to dance, has not revealed all of its secrets. You know what they call a quarter pounder with cheese in Paris? What do they call it? Royale with cheese. The director, who was awarded the Palme d'Or in Cannes in 1994, announced a big reveal this week. Several scenes cut from the film, some excerpts from the original script, and exclusive comments from Tarantino himself will be shared in seven NFTs. I love you, pumpkin. The Big Tease says that the content will only be visible to the future owners. Too bad for other movie lovers. <laughs> we finish by returning to New York City. The old Rolling Stone gives in to the temptation of NFTs. The famous American magazine, created in 1967, announced that it was launching a collection with Bored Ape Yacht Club. It'll include two covers featuring the famous digital monkey. Rolling Stone will also physically publish two magazines with the swaggy monkey. It'll be hard to get a copy though. The edition is already sold out. Well, that's it. Seven Days in Crypto is over. We'll see you next week for a new tour of crypto news.